Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Carrie Capen, and uh, I had the honor to be appointed to serve as a parliamentarian for the third congressional district's election of uh, their standing committee uh, delegates to the Democratic Party of Oregon uh, a little over a week ago or a week ago today. Um, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a uh, conversation about handling invalid elections, uh, teachable moments and protecting the rights of the members of an assembly. And my name is Larry Taylor. I'm a registered parliamentarian, and I was at the reorganization of the third CD, so I observed everything that happened that day. Uh, so the first thing we wanted to do is go back to the 30,000-foot level and talk about why we use rules of order. Uh, the rules are based on a regard for the rights of the majority, the minority, of individual members, of absentees, and all of these people together. Uh, and to going to the next slide, it is the majority taking part in the assembly who decide the general will, but only following upon the opportunity for a deliberative process of full and free discussion. And so what Carrie and I will be talking about is how these parliamentary concepts apply to a situation like this, where we have a, a, um, a election that is contested. Um, so uh, going to the uh, next slide here, contesting elections. So after an election has become final, as stated in uh, the paragraph on page 444, line 25 and 27 in Robert's Rules of Order 11th edition, it is too late to consider uh, the vote on an election. Uh, so, um, and then at that time, so if you, but if you want to contest the, um, the election, you can, a member can only do that by raising a point of order. So, um, basically the, uh, the uh, results are announced. The member is then, uh, required to basically stand up and say, Hey, point of order. I have a problem with the election results because of X, Y, and Z. And then, uh, you have a, a, a couple of options from there. Um, so if you go to the next slide on contesting elections, page 446, lines four through seven, the voting body itself is the ultimate judge of election disputes. Only that body has the authority to resolve them in the absence of a bylaw or special rule of order that specifically grants another body that authority. So basically, the results of an election are valid because the members say that they are. Uh, and so uh, an election can be declared invalid by the voting body and it can be redone. Uh, at that point. So there are uh, kind of a specific, um, there's a specific process that you can follow with a point of order, but uh, let us, well, we can back up a little bit and talk about the, the third CD uh, uh, committee elections. Larry. So, so just, <laughs> but just going back to how this all is delegated. So the, the, the governing body of the Democratic Party of Oregon is the state central committee. And in this instance, in the bylaws, what they do, what they have done is that they have, they have uh, delegated the election of the standing committees to the congressional district committees. And they've added the complexity of also allowing the SCC delegates who live within that congressional district to vote as well. But the, 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 voting, the, the voting body that is actually running the election is the third congressional district uh, committee. It's not the state central committee and it's not anyone else. So this is that whole concept of, of, of the power lying in the, in the state central committee, but them allocating that, that, uh, that power out to other groups to get things accomplished. So, um, Moving along to the next slide. So uh, last Sunday, uh, March the 3rd, the 3rd Congressional District Committee conducted elections for the DPO Standing Committee. Uh, the results were accepted and the meeting ended uh, only seven minutes late. Just uh, to pat ourselves on the back a little bit. Uh, the election was contested by a candidate for the Rules Committee. Uh, my understanding is the following day. Um, so that's not the normal, uh, 
the the accepted practice for that. So the process to resolve a contested election, ideally at the time, so during a regular special meeting called with proper notice, a member of the third congressional district may raise a point of order. So uh, if the rules of the assembly are being violated, he can make a point of order and uh, call upon the chair for a ruling and an enforcement of, of the rule. Uh, so the steps of that uh, is the member raises a point of order, the chair asks for details, the member states that the election for the rules committee was invalid and then states the reasons why it was invalid, and then the chair rules on the point of order. Uh, the chair also has the option to refer the question to the assembly as a, at a whole as a whole. So if uh, if in this instance this individual raised this point of order and uh, the chair could have said um, that this is you know a, a bigger matter than just to just rest on my opinion, what does the body think? And uh, then the, the body itself would vote to either uphold the point of order or not, and then they can decide from there whether it would be appropriate to redo the election or accept the results as they stand. So in summary, after proper deliberation, this, process, this places the ultimate decision with the voting body, uh, and the decision belongs to the bo voting body alone, and this is directly out of Robert's Rules of Order. It does not belong to the DPO chair. It doesn't belong to the DPO parliamentarian. It does not below, belong to the DPO rules chair, nor does the, the ultimate decision belong to the third CD chair. It, it's the, the body itself who makes the decision. Was there anything else you wanted to add, Carrie? Um, one last thing. So since the, the, um, the, the complaint, or uh, to put it another way, the point of order wasn't raised until after the meeting ended, the, the member could, in theory, either at the next regular meeting of the CD or they could, uh, if he got together with ten, nine of his friends, they could call a special meeting and handle this, this, this situation then. Um, but per CD3 bylaws, it requires 10 members to call a special meeting and then you have to have 10 days notice before they can hold a special meeting. So a single member can't demand that an election be redone and the chair can't just decree that an election be redone. It has to be following the, the, the terms of the bylaw and in proper order. And uh, then it would be put to the, to the will of the membership to decide whether they wanted to, to redo their, um, to redo their election or not. So if you have any questions on the process, you're more than welcome to contact either Carrie or I, and we'd be glad to, to walk you through the process. Thank you so much for your attention on this issue. Thank you.